Bonjour! Today we're taking you on a journey through the mystical city of Avignon, France. We'll be wandering the halls of the mighty Pope's Palace, indulging in delicious Provencal cuisine, and embarking on a delightful wine tour in the heart of the Rhone Valley, where we learn the secrets behind the region's world-famous wines. So buckle up and get ready to discover the magic of Avignon. Avignon's crown jewel is undoubtedly the Palais de Pape, or the Pope's Palace. The site was built in the 14th century when Avignon became the seat of the papacy. The palace is the largest Gothic structure in Europe and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In the 14th century, there was a clash between the Pope and the King of France as to who held the ultimate authority. This led to King Philip IV pressuring the cardinals to elect the French Pope, Pope Clement V. Feeling unsafe in Rome, the Pope moved his palace to Avignon, where the papacy will remain for seven decades before returning back to Rome in 1377. Imagine a colossal structure that blends the beauty of a cathedral with the imposing strength of a fortress. That is the Palais du Pape in a nutshell, a symbol of the Pope's power and wealth. We enjoyed a beautiful dinner at Restaurant Avenio at the city center. This warm, contemporary restaurant is run by a young couple with experience at high-end establishments. It has earned much success and has been included in the Michelin Guide. They serve seasonal menus with products exclusively from the local area. We were wowed by our entree of scallops with foie gras and cream of Jerusalem artichokes and chestnut with roasted shrimps in a shellfish sauce. For mains, I had monkfish with bacon cream, cabbage, and dried black pig belly. Julie had the truffle risotto with cured ham. We paired this with a local wine from Lirac. For dessert, we shared this beautiful apple crumble, so decadent but light. This has been a truly special and outstanding meal. Next, we shift gears from exploring Avignon's historical gems and head out to explore the beauty of the Rhone Valley wine region. Nestled alongside the mighty Rhone River, this world-renowned wine country has been thriving here for centuries. Nurtured by the unique combination of Mediterranean climate, diverse soils, and the cooling influence of the Mistral Wind. Our first stop was the Domaine de Morchon in the village of Segure. Segure is one of the village appellations of Côte de Rhone and is steadily gaining a good reputation. Domaine de Morchon is widely recognized to be leading this development. We tried a variety of their wines, from their Côte de Rhone Blanc to their Luby Rosé to their signature Segure. All their wines are very highly rated in Vivino, with their Grand Reserve rated among the top 4% of wines in the world, and their Chateau of the Pop among the top 2%. After this, we stopped by one of France's most beautiful villages, Seguret. The village is characterized by red roof tiles, golden stone walls, and cypress trees. 
It is perched on a hillside like a brooch of precious stones. Its name means security in the Provencal dialect, which it probably earned from its strategic position. Next on the tour was the Appellation of Baume de Venise. World famous for their sweet Muscat wines, this region now has an exceptional Cru Red wine as well. The vineyards in Baume de Venise can be traced back to 600 years BC, when a Greek community moved into these mountains. Located on the southern side of the Tantel de Montmirail, sits the picturesque Domaine de Coyot. Tasted their white wine, their Baume de Venise Village Red, Gigondas, and their legendary Muscat. The famous Robert Parker hailed their Muscat as an exceptional wine. The vino ranks it among the top 4% of wines in the world. Gigondas is a personal favorite of mine, and I very much enjoyed their version. Lunch was at the beautiful Chateau de Finroche, at the heart of the Chateau Neuf de Pape appellation. Built in the 19th century, this imposing structure overlooks the entire Rhone Valley. We unfortunately weren't able to get a lot of footage here, but lunch was beautiful. Our next stop was quite a special one. Chateau Lenert is a true living legend with a history dating back 500 years. We sampled three vintages of their Chateau of the Pap wines, as well as the iconic Cuvée des Cadets and Claude de Bovenier rare white wine made of the best Rosan and white Grenache. The vino ranks both their Clos de Bovenir and Cuvée de Cadets among the top 1% of wines in the world. Touring their beautiful facilities and trying their prestigious wines was a real privilege and a dream for wine nerds like us. For our last stop, we dropped by Chateau de Manisi to try some Tavelle. Tavelle rosés are dry, deep in color and flavor, and have a minimum of 11% alcohol. This wine is historically famous for being the favorite of Kings Philippe le Bel and Louis XIV, along with the popes of Avignon and literary figures such as Ernest Hemingway. We were treated to a lineup of gorgeous white wines from Lirac and rosés from Tavil. It was our first time trying Tavil, and in our opinion, it is among the best rosés in the world. Shout out to Provence Panorama and our awesome guide Thierry for this wonderful tour. Another place we absolutely loved is Le Pequelet. It's a wine bar in the heart of the city, run by siblings who are children of a former rugby player turned wine grower. We ordered some delicious bar snacks. There was a selection of local charcuterie, pork cooked in a plancha, and spiced cauliflower. This went very well with their father's own wine called Carton Rouge, which is a full-bodied red made from Grenache and Syrah. Avignon's landmark, the Pont Saint-Benezet, is a bridge steeped in history and legend. 
though only four of its original 22 arches remain standing today. This partially ruined bridge still holds immense charm. Construction began in 1177 and was a monumental feat of engineering for its time, allowing for vital passage across the Rhone River. While floods and military campaigns have taken their toll over the centuries, the bridge's enduring presence has sparked the imagination of storytellers. The famous French folk song, Sur le Pont d'Avignon, or On the Bridge of Avignon, adds to its mystique, making it a symbol of Avignon's rich heritage and a must-see for any visitor. On our last evening in Avignon, we wanted to have some traditional Provencal dishes. So we booked dinner at Restaurant Le Pisserie. The warm service and adorable decor offered a welcome refuge from the icy winds outside. For entree, we had a tart of andives with creme of Roquefort. For mains, I had the classic pot of feu, and Julie had the tuna steak. For dessert, shared a dark chocolate cake with creme anglaise. The food was simple and comforting. It was perfect for the weather and perfect in this setting. There is an eerie mysterious aura to Avignon, from the Grand Pope's Palace to the centuries-old winemaking their cuisine. Everything felt like it was steeped in history. We hope you enjoyed our adventures and we have inspired you to add Avignon to your travel list. Till next time! <laughs>